Hello everybody, this is Cap here and I would like to welcome you to the 32nd video in my beginner C++ tutorial series. In this video we are going to be covering the last uh, polymorphism topic in this series and that is templates. And templates fall under the compile time polymorphism. And I'll give you a little example here of how they are supposed to be used. So let's say we have a class that just adds, you know, two things together. Say num1 and num2. Oh, sorry about that. Num2. And we just return num1 plus num2. So we can come down here and say see out, you know, add two and two. Whoops. Save it, run it, and of course it prints out four as we expected. So what happens if we come down here and say, you know, 2.5? and 2.5 save it and run it now it still runs but it is we won't get five and that's because it implicitly converts these to integers so what if we wanted to create a function that would take any type and add them together as is or without you know converting them into you know an integer or double or something like that well that's where templates come in see with templates we can basically create a generic type that we are telling it to accept and we do this by saying template and type name whoops there we go we'll go with T ah, I don't know why I had so much trouble with that there we go and we want it to return T and we want to pass in T and another T and I'm actually going to change this to plus equal, and you guys will whoops, and you guys will see why uh, later on. So basically, what we're saying here is we have a generic type, and we're going to call it type T. We don't know what it is yet, and we won't know until, or it won't know until compile time when it decides. So we are whatever type T is, we're going to pass two of them in and return it. Uh, also, something worth noting is that class will also work here. Instead of type name, we could say class, but I like to use type name because it is far less confusing. So now if we say C out add two and two C out add two point five and two point five save it and run it now we get the expected four and five so what's happening here is when it comes through and runs our function it sees that we are passing in doubles so type t is then a double here it sees that we're passing in integers so therefore type t is an integer but 
what happens here when we say add uh, 2.5 and 2. It flags it. And the reason it flags it is because it doesn't know what to do. Because we're trying to pass in both a double and an integer. And it doesn't know whether we want type T to be a double or whether we want it to be an integer. So in order to... Well, there are actually two ways you could solve this. The easiest being just tell it that we want them both... We want type T to be a double. Like that. And it will take both of these arguments as doubles and return a double. If we run it. As you can see, we get 4.5. Or we can also add another generic type up here. By just adding a comma and saying type name u and u. So now it can accept two different types. But there's also an issue with this. Because if we run it like this, as we can see, it's still 4.5. But if we switch these around and make that 2, and this 2.5, and run it, so you can see we get 4. And that's because we're returning type T. And since we're passing in a 2 first, type T is going to be an integer, not a double. So even though we are still passing in a double, it is going to convert the return, whatever's returned, into an integer. So that's something to be mindful of. And we can also do the exact same thing that we did last time by telling it exactly what we want it to do. Say we want that one to be an int and... Oops. Well, actually, we can just pass them both in as doubles if we so desire. Probably the easiest way to handle that. Run it. And then we get the desired result. So, generic programming is very powerful. And you can do a lot of things and write a lot of great code with it. Great reusable code. And not only can we pass in, you know, the built-in data types like integers and doubles and chars. We can also type in, or pass in, sorry, classes. So you guys can remember, I overrode the plus equal operator in my poly class. So here I'm just going to create three poly objects. Say a.num1 I'm going to set it equal to 2 a.num2 set that equal to 5 and going to do the same thing with these. Okay. So now we can say C is equal to add A and B and C out C dot num one, put a space and C dot num two. So if we save it and run it, though it is very inefficient, it still works and does what we wanted it to. And we got our result of 4 and 10. So not only can you pass in the built-in data types, you can pass in you know, your class or really any class that you want to, assuming that it has a, you know, working plus equal uh, operator overload, or sorry, override, or, 
you know, in some way can use the plus equal operator. Uh, so in the next video, we are going to be covering using templates with classes. So if you like this video, let me know by hitting that like button. If you've watched a few of my videos and really like them, go ahead and subscribe so that you can see when I post new videos. And I would like to thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.